Well, Stanley, that ended up uh, being quite a tight game in the end, didn't it? Uh, 228, you would think, would take some defending, but Durham nearly got over the line. Yeah, I didn't think it. I think it was 100 for one, um, but the boys took it amazingly. And uh, yeah, so glad that we took it down to the last over, but that just shows what Durham's about. And uh, a key yeah, partnership from you and George Trussell near the end, yeah. 48 runs desperately needed because there would have been very little to bowl at if you, if you hadn't got those on the ball. I think me and Drew just said, look, we're going to try and take it to the end. A nine leg out in the second to last over, but we knew if we got it about 220, then we've got in, we're in for a chance. And when they got to 94 for none, I think that was in about 18 overs, it yeah. looked like it was going to be a, a cruise from a Sussex point of view. I was making a note down the side of my scorecard, and at one point they were 34 runs ahead of where Durham yeah. had been. By the penultimate over, you'd reeled them back into just a five run lead, so an incredible turnaround in the yeah. second half of their innings. I think it was class, you know, uh, obviously we dropped to catch early on. Lad went on to get 50, but you know, again, shows what Durham's about. We stuck at it really well. Dots, pressure came, but just unlucky we can't get over the line again. It's annoying, but taking our stride into the next game and hopefully, hopefully get a win. Yeah, I think it was all dropped on 22, top edge off rush with to yeah. Coglin. You'd normally expect Paul Coglin to, to pounce one of those. In commentary, I'm saying, well, he should catch this, but we've seen a few catches go yeah. down here in the last few weeks yeah. because the sky's too yeah. bright, the sun's shining. Uh, has he said what happened there? <laughs> Everyone keeps on blaming it on the big blue, but once you actually get under there, it's a lot harder than you think. Yo, I've dropped a few under there, it's not, it's not nice. So if it goes steep, you've <laughs> got this sort of hazy sky and it just disappears into the sky, is that what happens? Yeah, just blue sky, just like, it just deceives you a little bit. You think, you think you're there and then all of a sudden it comes quicker than you think, but you know. Fielding's a funny game, but you know, I'm sure we'll be back better. Now, talk us through the, the bowling then, because you kept things tight. Uh, George Drizell kept things tight. Everybody kept yeah. things tight, and the numbers were quite low today. Yeah, I think I just wanted to make a clear plan. Obviously, bowling up Jar, I just wanted to try and make as many dots as possible. I know he's so good at rotating the strike, and I just thought if I keep him at one end, then, then I've done my job. I think a lot of people thought because uh, Chetashar Pajara was there, mm. it was just going to be a formality, but you managed to tie him down as well. Yeah, he's, he's a class player, you know. He, he didn't play many shots and got himself to 49, but that was the key one we wanted to get out. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think we've, we've done our task pretty well and, and kept him quite quiet. So looking at the scorecard, they won with four wickets and four balls to spare. Yeah. Did you imagine when they were 94 for none, you'd, you'd actually get them to the final over and have them in a no. position where you could win? Definitely not. I mean, they were 100 for one, I thought then all of a sudden boys like the team spirit's just amazing and uh, we kept at it really well and then took them down to the to the final wire which was I'm so proud of and it was family day here so yeah. quite a decent attendance lots of children in enjoying it as well yeah I think it shows what it's all about you know Graham Clark gets out ends up signing loads of autographs to the kids I think that just shows what what Durham, Durham players love to do now there's two up matches to come yeah there's uh, Warwickshire away on Sunday and then Leicestershire away on Tuesday. I, I suppose from your point of view, it's a case, and certainly from the younger lads, to, just to try and see how much more yeah. you can get out of this competition this year. I think, you know, obviously, it come hasn't gone how we how we really wanted it to, but I think these last two we can show what we're really about. We've been getting teams right down to the wire. Um, and I just think these last two, we can really show that we can get two big wins under our belt. Did, were you at Warwickshire for the T20? Were you part of the yeah, squad there? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you, you see, you've seen the size of Edge Pass and yeah. experience what it's about. Yeah, no, obviously massive ground, uh, unreal um, outfield, but I think it's going to be a great chance to show show what we can do on there. Just quickly, Mr. Dan. Um, obviously, at the start of the comp, you would like to play a big role, but like, what is this? <laughs> obviously, the responsibilities. What is it like being trusted to play these big overs in closing matches? Um, I think it's yeah, no, it's hard. You know, um, I think you've just got to stick out to the task really well. I think you just want to want to bring it to the other team and just like show what Durham can do. Obviously, I felt like I got into my room towards the end and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. What, what, what have, you, have, you, have you learned from yourself as a bowler in, in this competition? Yeah, I think white ball's a little bit different. I think you got a bit longer than you think in 50 overs. You know, T20 comes on comes on to you a little bit quicker than you think. But I think you've just got a ball more about bowling four day lengths really, and just like tying a batter down, building a bit more pressure. But yeah, enjoying it. Have you been adapting your length a little bit because seen today you're going a bit fuller than you Yeah, I think I think you want to try and be as full as possible. You also want to try and take as many wickets as you can because if partnerships don't get broken then then you're gonna struggle. So you, you do want to be a bit more full, but you know, you guys just gotta to adapt to different situations. In the Royal London we've seen 
quite a contrast in pitches. I mean, this was quite a low-scoring game. Yeah. But in, you know, at Somerset, it was obviously a quite high-scoring yeah. game. So how, how difficult is it to adapt to different situations? Anyway? I just think like Somerset was a bit of a one-off. To be fair, like the guys played an absolute gem within an inch, but you know, I think you can't really do much. To be honest, you can't. You've just got to change the way you play and see how the game's going, and then you've got to adapt your ball into that. I reckon. And the mental side of the game, how difficult is it as a bowler just to hold yeah. your combo skills can be a thankless task. Mate, cricket's, cricket's a hard game to, to follow, mate, because one game you can be playing as best as you can, and the next you, could, you can go for as many runs, do you know what I mean? So I just think you've just got to take it in stride, really. And is it nice to be like sharing this experience? You've got obviously Tom McIntosh, and you've yeah. got Ollie Gibson as well. It's nice to have like, a few yeah. younger I'm, lads like yourselves. Obviously, I'm living with Tom. Together. I'm living with Tom, you know, I've known him for, for a few years now and mm. it's class class to be on the pitch together and as, as well as the other younger lads. Yeah. And there's not a lot of experienced players around, but he's one of the best in the business in Chris Rush. Yeah. What, what's it like learning from him? Mate, learning loads of him, you know. I think he's done it for so many years, red and white ball, you know. Um, it just shows, you know, he keeps his composure towards the end and that's how you want to play your game.